Hello guys, it's been a while. Uh, the idea of uh, today's video is uh, really simple. How you could uh, use personal access tokens and uh, just an example where you could store them and how to configure them so you could use them in your project. Uh, so now I have a GitLab repository, an empty one. I want to copy that repository, so I go and open it. And when I try to run git clone, I get an error that I don't have access to do it. So uh, in order for me to check what kind of configuration I have, I could open the global git configuration file uh, like this. And you could see that I have a user, I have my name, my email, and then I could have different sections with credentials. And in those credential sections, you could say, what's the origin? So in this case, it's the global gitlab.com, but you could use, uh, let's say, a clients one or something else. Uh, you could set your username, and then you could say what kind of helper you are going to use, and you could have multiple different uh, credential files, or you could have the credentials directly in this file. I personally prefer to have different files for uh, different clients, for uh, different sources. So, uh, if I open the file that's listed, you could see that it has my email and then uh, we have two dots and then the actual token. Don't worry, this one is already deleted. So even if you try, it won't work. Uh, how you could find them in your profile, if you're using GitLab, then under access tokens, you could see that I don't have any access tokens. So I could create a new one. Let's name it my access token, or just my token. Uh, you could set an expiration date. Usually it's one month. So that's why you could see it's uh, for the next month. Then you need to select scopes. It's written right repository unless you do something more fancy. And then you could create your personal access token. Once this is created, you could see the access token and copy it. So I'll just copy it. And the next thing that I'm going to do is edit this file here. And in that file, what is the syntaxis that I'm using? So I'm simply providing the user. Then uh, we have the two dots and then I'm pasting the token that I just created. When I save the file, I could again check what I have in my config, but you could see I have a reference that if you try to use github.com, uh, the username will be this one. And then the helper file is this. And in the helper file, if you check the, uh, the contents of the helper file, uh, you could see that we have the username and the actual token, or you could name it like it's password. So if I try to clone again this time, I'm asked for a password, and in here I'm ask, asked for the password of the contents of this file. And you could see that the password is actually my token. So if I paste it, voila, I managed to simply copy. And uh, I could access the file and let's say, edit this file. And then I could commit the file, edit it, read me. And we could check what do we have. And we could say git push origin. And I'm not asked anymore about any password. This is directly updated. And if I refresh here, you will see my user uh, that it's actually making this update. And if you open it, uh, you will see uh, who is the user and uh, how this was done. So that's the very aim of this video. Keep it short. Remember, you could use git config files. You could uh, use different helpers in this case. So I'm using a helper to store the uh, token and you could have different tokens. So before finishing the video, I will revoke the token. And by doing that, 
if I try again to do something else, I get access denied because the token is already not working. Thank you.